Hey, what's up guys? Gavin Peacock here from Flip Society. I'm finally getting around to doing this tutorial with you guys. I just wanted to do a very quick introduction and try to keep these videos as short as possible so you're not sitting down for hours at a time. So, without further delay, let's get on to it and start with chapter one, video one. I don't know what I'm going to call this. We'll call it part one. Okay, guys, I've called this segment uh, edit video like a pro, editing video like a pro. I'm pretty good, but I'm definitely not the best. This is going to be a more basic straightforward style of editing i'm not going to get into crazy effects crazy layering crazy masks this is going to be the art of editing at its uh, lowest level to make the biggest bang for your buck in footage we're going to start this off assuming you've already shot footage that could be a whole nother 10 part series of how to actually properly shoot with the gopro but i'm going to skip that maybe come back to it and give you some some shooting tips later on but we're going to assume you've gone out and shot and you're ready to dump into an editing program and get going. And you can basically break down, um, I have great footage and bad editing. You can have the greatest footage of something and have it ruined by the lack of editing capability. Um, and if you reverse that, having bad footage, you can kind of make bad footage better by having great editing capability. So we're gonna get into the basics, starting from literally opening a project file um, all the way until spitting out a final movie file to get uh, uploaded to YouTube for people to watch and I'm gonna go through all the steps believe it or not in seven videos as fast as I can I'm talking way too much already so let's get on with it the only advice for this series I'm gonna give you guys on shooting footage is my little mini poem of how to make great great content and I have written down here on my cheat sheet so you can hear wrinkling in front of me is smooth and steady slow moving unless fast blue sky beats gray and sunset or sunrise is the happiest hour. So smooth and steady, always when you can. Okay, camera's gonna be slow moving unless it's fast, right? You got a GoPro mounted to a mountain bike ripping down a hill, you're not gonna care to move that camera slow. And blue sky always beats gray. I'm showing you some footage of Jamaica, I think right now as I think of my post editing to this video. Um, blue sky, bright sky is always gonna bring in more color saturation, let the chip in the camera absorb more information. Um, and give you a greater overall shot. Sometimes I won't even think to shoot anything in gray sky unless it's a crazy, you know, anomaly, something wild's happening. Um, most of the time now in my later days of editing, I don't even bother shooting on gray sky days, maybe use it as a practice day. But yeah, thinking towards editing, that footage most of the time, 99% of the time, isn't gonna make the final cut. So here's an example of gray sky ruining a shot, making it look horrible, but whatever's happening inside the shot overrides. We've got a cute babe here doing a hula hoop. So when I was shooting this, I was super angry that it was a shit day, but I knew I was gonna film it anyway. In my 365 piece, this is the one clip that always stands out to me because I think it's the only one that has a crap gray sky in it, but obviously babes override bad weather. That's a rule, write it down. So uh, I kept it in there. And you can see that trash pisses me off. I wish it was blue sky and all green grass. Let's watch that again. Oh yeah, example. And then we go cut the blue, looks way better, colors popping. You can see why you don't usually wanna use that gray sky. It just dulls everything out. And then all filmmakers talk about happy hour. That's gonna be the hours after basic sunrise and the hours leading into sunset. That's when the sky saturates, sun is the best color. I'm sure I got some time, time lapse shots to show you guys, but if there's a time of day you wanna to shoot to maximize you know, the quality of the camera, make it those hours. That's my easy little shooting poem to get you through. That is 1A checked off, and now I'm moving on to 1B, which is creating our project. Boom. So, yeah, whether you're using GoPro Studio, Final Cut, Adobe, any real video editor, you're probably gonna be able to follow, follow along because all these things are more or less the same. So we've got a new project here. I've set up a tutorial video folder to stick this into. We're gonna name this just simple tutorial. For now, I'm not gonna be referring to this anymore. I'm gonna be going into my other project <clears throat> files so you can actually see everything more stretched out and elaborate. So then we get to our main empty screen here. Nothing has been imported. No sequences have been created, so we're just staring at blank. And second step now is over here in our bin, which we're gonna be using to hold everything of the project. 
I'm going to start with a new sequence and this opens up all the sequence settings and in this part you're going to make sure whatever you decide to choose here is either an intentional choice that isn't the same as your GoPro or you're going to match exactly the way you shot with your GoPro. So this opens up to just default 1080p 60 frames a second which is for still most of the time what I end up shooting on my GoPro and I'm showing you now overlay of my GoPro screen. You can see it's got 1080p and 60. This is going to be super important for you guys to match. You don't want to be doing 720 video into a 1080 timeline because you'll be getting all the stretching or the up resing um, and that's no good. That'll lead to crappy um, compressed quality uh, when you spit this out to YouTube in the end of all these videos. So we're going to create a 1080p 60 frames per second timeline. So we've got our layout set up here. First two things, I always create the sequence and I create an initial bin, which is going to be to store our footage when we start to import it. It's very important once you get into really big editing projects, multiple cameras, just multi-day shoots, big traveling trip, you're going to have so much footage, you're going to want to stay organized with these bins. You can make a ton of them, Okay, you name them all different things with the slow click. But whatever your style, you can call them ABCs. I call them camera one, camera two, camera threes. Day one, day two, yada, yada. You can uh, do whatever you want to keep it very organized. Boom. Okay, now you're working with clips inside your bin, inside the main master project bin here. For layout, we have our timeline, multiple layers. You guys will see that. Up here is where our master video ends up. Uh, previewing and then here as well when I click on some clips is where we're doing our fine tuning and editing so we'll get into all this I got reminders here to usually pick a song before you start editing I would always pick a song before I start editing sometimes I'll hear a song and even go out and start shooting with the mindset that I'm gonna be editing to that song helps with mental visualization um, to kind of start storyboarding shots as you're editing or as you're shooting um, knowing they're gonna be laid down to a certain song that always helps if not you can go completely blind find a sweet track lay it in there and then start making footage work for it so this is all we're gonna show right here for this I got my Bonnaroo project folder open with a million clips and I'm gonna show you the first process in drag and dropping start to sort out the rough footage from the good footage I call it the slay and lay where we're gonna be slaying clips cutting them all up and laying them physically onto the timeline to start making our super rough first version uh, sequence. So let's get onto that. Boom. Okay, so to keep the very the first video very basic, we're gonna just end with this uh, going through our library, going through every single clip, finding the pieces we'd like, and dragging them to our rough timeline. In the second video, we're gonna get into all the structure of editing, styles of editing. Um, Techniques, approaches, blah, 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 blah. Starting to utilize our waveforms in their songs, but we'll get there in a sec. So I got here all my Bonnaroo footage. I think this is clips. You can see how much this just goes on forever and ever and ever. Where's the top? So I labeled this folder one. I think that's by day one. This is day two. Three end clips is our ride home. So in day one. Okay, so I got all these hundreds of clips inside my day one folder, and this is exactly what you'd be doing with your clips. They're all super rough. You don't know what's on them. You remember shooting them, but now you're going through them. This is the super tedious part. You don't want to be thinking about um, any structure yet. You're literally just going in and trying to find the first stage of best of the best. So if I have this clip opened up, I'm going to be seeking through here. Okay, and I know there's two sections of this clip that I like, so I can remember taking this clip. These are girls we met from Canada while we're in Bonnaroo. So right here I'm gonna use my in, which is I, and O button as my out is usually a standard across all editing platforms to select that little piece that I like. I like to use the drag and drop option. Um, for no good reason, I just like to physically see that clip jumping to the timeline. You can also use the um, insert and overwrite options here. You see here, insert for me is comma, and overwrite is period. So if I were to just bring that cursor to the next clip and click this button, or use comma, it's going to insert and move everything down. Overwrite would put those clips on top. So it would probably be overwrite that you're going to use more. Um, the reason I don't do that is because you end up 
if you can multiply this, imagine this timeline is now 40 minutes long or whatever it's going to be. If you by accident hit overwrite, that clip will sneak into there. And if you blink even once, you're going to miss where it was and you're going to have all sorts of screw ups. You never know where your cursor ends up. Hopefully it's always at the end. But for me, I like to physically see that clip going to the timeline. So let's just get rid of all those, go back to where we were. Okay, so this is how it would work. And then I would go through some more, see if there's more good stuff in this clip. Oh, I'm high-fiving the girls now, so I'm going to mark the in. Boom, 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 and done. I hit O as the out. Space bar is start, stop. Okay, and then I'm going to physically drag that down to the timeline. I'm not looking for structure. I'm not timing this song yet. I'm just keeping it there. My music I always keep into usual track one for audio. I'll sometimes lock it so I don't end up moving it by accident. But right now, we're not worried about that. We're literally just going through each clip, going to the next one. Scanning for good stuff, scanning for good stuff, scanning for good stuff. That could be whatever you decide, whatever you're looking for inside your clip. I think I just, by accident, was recording for no good reason in that clip, so I'll skip it. I can already see that I've ed edited this footage so I know where the good piece is. So if I scroll to the end here, boom, I suddenly decide to keep the camera steady. That's a nice pan, might want to use that. You're going to include everything you might want to use right now. Okay, nothing... It's ever left out. When you're done this, I'm going to get into it more in detail. The goal is to have everything you might potentially use for your final piece to be laying in this timeline. Okay, so you never actually go back to your rough footage. It'll be lost in a zoo down here. You want to know that you went through every single clip, scanned every single frame of everything you shot. Here's my buddy losing his voice. Let's get this. Very annoying. A lot of GoPro camera noise, but whatever. We're going to keep it. Drop it down. Keep going, keep going. Oh, waving to some girls in the next Ferris wheel cart over. They're doing their thing. There we go. Mark the I. Mark the O. I think we're into some drinks already. Okay, just having a good time. We're going through. That's a nice shot of the grounds. Beam got in the way. I'm going to keep hitting I to keep readjusting where the cursor is. And when I decide to do a final study pan here, oh, there's a good shot. Take that, boom, drag, drop down. You get the point. You're going to do this for all your clips all the way through. This is the super tedious part. My last thing to close with is the auto save feature. I got an OCD thing with hitting control S, constantly saving my project. But I also have up in my preferences and my auto save option here. Auto save turned on for every five minutes. If you're doing super detailed stuff, I'd turn that down to even just two minutes. You can get through a lot of uh, finicky tweaks inside two minutes and it'd be awful to lose it. Um, sometimes defaults are 15 minutes and that's just far too long uh, for the work you'd get done. If you imagine drag and dropping all those clips, um, how long you get through in 15 minutes if that's just suddenly erased for some reason, it's an awful feeling. So that's it for now. I'm going to end there. We're going to keep going. We're going to get into now part two. We'll be arranging our clips and actually getting into an editing structure and tactic and approach. All right, done.